Welcome today, RC enthusiasts. Another edition here, and probably a little different than what you would expect it. I actually decided to get a tank, and just an inexpensive uh, 128th tank. And uh, when I got it, I intended to actually, which I will do, is use it as a platform for my antiquing. And then as I looked at it, and it had absolutely solid wheels to it, and I said, I want to make it actually have suspension. So, uh, you know me, can't leave well enough alone. So what I wanted to do is I wanted to show you the real simple way that I actually created this to have suspension. And I'll see also, and you'll see in the video too, that I just made some triangular pieces and I cut off the wheels from the actual solid section. So, let me get started here. Uh, normally I took the whole body and everything off, but in this instance, I will go ahead and just remove, simply for the moment, I will just remove one of the treads partially. It, uh, as you can see, it drives from the rear wheel, and you can see how these very simply work in just being able to rotate back and forth. I'm sorry, you should probably do it this way. Rotate back and forth like that. And let me take just one, well I'll take two of them off because I actually made two different triangles and I'll tell you why on that. Let's see if I can get this in there. Okay. Uh, real simple screws. Just screw right into the frame. That's how simple that is. What I did was I actually added a washer on the underside and basically you can probably see right from here that was where one of the solid axles was and here was where the other solid axle was. I basically just took a very fine saw and just basically sawed them off. Then once I had them sawed off, let's move this out over here once I had them sawed off, oh, and this is another little trick I noticed. If I take a screwdriver and just place it in here, I tried to take the wheels off. I couldn't get them actually off, to slip off. So what I did is I just put it in that like that, into the slot, held it, and basically that's as simple as it is. Now, what I did with these pieces is after I sawed them off I realized that they needed to be a lot closer so then what I did is I just took a block of wood and a piece of sandpaper and let's just say this is the block of wood here wrap the sandpaper around and I literally just went and filed them down now the important thing to recognize is that right now what you should try to attain is this angle here is exactly the same as that angle there so that the tread pattern with this inner piece rides not only in the drive shaft but also in these other parts too. Now the reason I want to take these two off is this one is a very simple triangle basically. So you can see that. And this is the pivot point right here and it just moves back and forth. Very, very simple. I was going to experiment with actually doing it completely across and having the centerpiece here, but it just seemed to my mind that I wanted more of a triangular piece. From what I've seen, most tanks have their pivot point above this parallel line between the two wheels. So everything is done basically with putting a flat screwdriver into the slot Drilling a hole, sanding it off, basically, <laughs> cutting. All of that is done actually quite simply. It's just tedious because there are 12 wheels on this particular one. So once again, if you can see, I literally just screw them together once I've drilled a hole into the wheel. And, of course, getting it to line up is the important part. And 
you get to a certain point where I notice you can put it actually down on the table if you get the right size handle. And then just do it this way. And screw it in nice and tight. And there you have your two, your two pieces and your triangular piece. Now, I did a center on at least two of my triangular pieces here. This one's centered and this one's centered. This one, if you can see, is actually off-center. The reason I did that is because on this particular piece here, you have a little problem here with the motor being right there. Now, if you can see that, the motor's right there. And they created this little angled piece here that juts out so the motor can fit in it. So with that, you have to make sure that your screw is small enough to be able to fit into that. So, and again, as you can see, the wheels turn very freely because they're still on their original shafts. You just cut them and put them in. So with this, uh, what I needed to do was, can you see the difference there? Is one is offset. My centerpiece is offset. So, with, I noticed just so far that if I offset it so the shorter piece goes towards the back drive wheel seem to work better in the suspension wise. So, that is basically very simple of what I did. There is one thing that I do want to try actually is, as you can see, I originally made these pieces out of plastic and these slot sliding pieces out of plastic. What I'm going to do the next time is actually make them out of aluminum or a harder plastic. This is actually kind of a soft plastic. Uh, I had a little bit of problem with sometimes the track coming off the wheel uh, when things would get caught in there. Uh, it is a small RC so or a small T tank so it does on occasion run off the track. But there again what I'm going to do is make sure that everything lines up perfectly. You see the front one is no suspension at all, and the back one is no suspension. But where you get the suspension, just flip over to the other side, where you get the suspension is basically right after each drive wheel. So, and here's, here's where you basically, most of the time, your tank is already on the way down when it's falling down, so you, that's why you can actually have it work better in this direction. Uh, let's see, the only other thing I can think of uh, right now is it's very important that you shave pretty darn close your axle points uh, to the wheel itself. And I might even go a little bit further too because I noticed I could actually go further. But, uh, uh, you know, it's an experiment and uh, I was actually pleasantly surprised. I hope you enjoyed the videos that come up next. And as I said, one of the reasons that I actually got this particular piece was it's a similar color to my B36 that I actually uh, weatherized. And this is going to get weatherized also. So I'm looking forward to doing it. It's actually, this model is quite detailed. I'm, uh, I'm quite impressed. This uh, actually is a 128th RC battle tank, and you can see basically all the different tanks that they have on there, and I find that pretty interesting, and uh, it's a heck of a lot of fun. Uh, I may buy some more and actually do some other experimentations with these. Um, I got this, I believe I got this off of Amazon, and it was not that expensive at all. And as you can see from the videos, it's a heck of a lot of fun. Subscribe if you like what you see. And I'd love to have some comments uh, from there, and stay tuned for the next video, which will be weatherizing this tank. And so you can see basically how I do my simple method like I did on my WPLB 36. Signing off for now. You have a wonderful day, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.